Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. A conference showdown tonight here in South Bend. It's the Syracuse Orange making the trip from Central New York as they take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Syracuse on a three-game winning streak. Notre Dame looking for its first conference home victory of the season. Welcome here at courtside. Mike Cust along with John Crispin. Glad to have you along with us tonight. Last time these two teams played was a wild game, and it's already time to run it back in the ACC 18 days later. Yeah, January 4th, these two teams met. They combined for 33-point shots. Now, that's understandable when you think about Notre Dame going against the zone. They're going to find those opportunities. They move the basketball well. They also take care of it, only turn it over just under 10 a game in terms of turnovers. That's ridiculous. But for Syracuse, it's not that Syracuse found something in Buddy Beheim. Buddy Beheim found something in himself, and he's made himself one of the best scorers in the ACC. Coming in off a career-high tying 26-point performance in a win against Virginia Tech, one that came right down to the wire for the Orange and the Hokies. He went 5 of 13 from 3. John Mooney, meanwhile, averaging 15 points, 14 rebounds, coming off his 14th double-double of the year. He's the nation's leading rebounder. Video game stats. They're unbelievable. Even and his coaches can't make sense of it. They say, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. For a Syracuse team that struggles to contain big men, especially under the basket, an intriguing matchup against the Orange. Double-double for Mooney in 63% of the games he started in his career, and the Irish come away with the opening tip. One of the big things for Syracuse is eliminating second-chance opportunities, particularly when those shots come from three for Notre Dame. The zone takes you out of position in terms of the one-on-one -on -one box out situations. Mooney from the short corner sends it to Fluger straight away. Durham with the shovel pass. And Mooney has his try tipped away. Here comes Syracuse first time down the floor with Elijah Hughes and Buddy Beheim, the best three-point shooting duo in the country. 120 made threes between the two of them. Dolajai puts it up, and Sidibe puts it in. The first two for the Orange here on the road. You can even give Buddy Beheim some credit for that basket because he kept his defender so far from help side that the pass over the top was there with no really defender in place. Up inside to the logo for Mooney, and the kick out is good for T.J. Gibbs, who's shooting 55% from three in conference games. That's good. Here we got a, an inside out three-point opportunity. Now I can get that obligatory high post short corner out of the way. Obviously, that's where you want to get the ball against the zone. John Mooney's able to make plays from there. Dolajai tips it. Out of bounds. Mike Eade says it's going the other way. Jim Behan, 44th season, took over in 1976. That was the year Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak founded Apple. To give you perspective on how long he's been successful at the helm. It's two for two for T.J. Gibbs from three. We talked about this 33-point baskets made between the two teams. And Notre Dame understands they have to make a certain amount of three-point shots to win this basketball game. We talked to Mike right before the game, and he thought that number was 10-plus. It was a combined 33s between the two of them first time they met. And Jawan Durham gets called for his first foul, the big man for Notre Dame. Always loose, always smiling. Mike Bray winning his coach in Notre Dame men's basketball history. Not always. No coach is always smiling. He is one of the nicest men in this game, though. I'll tell you that. Well, all coaches are always going a little bit grayer every day. But it doesn't seem to have impacted him. I'm not coaching. What's <laughs> happened? Salt's taking over the pepper. Dolezal from the free throw line gets the second. And it's T.J. Gibbs, 6, Syracuse, 4. Yarish dormant for a week last Wednesday. Picked up a win against Georgia Tech in Atlanta, 78-74. It's the Irish and Georgia Tech, the only two teams left in the ACC without a win at home in conference play. Sidibe gets a hand on the pass, and Gerard leads the break for Syracuse. Hughes steps right into it and cancels his first three. 
It might be the easiest look he's going to get all game. And only you, you only get that transition because the defense hasn't gotten set. They're stopping the basketball, which means personnel hasn't been identified. Look at it. Backside lob to Juan Durham coming from the clouds to stuff it through. Maybe I'll stop talking and just <laughs> let the highlights breathe. We can't let you steal money that easily, though. <laughs> Hughes working on Mooney into the lane, and Mooney basically let him go. Yeah, look, that's a tough matchup, obviously, but, but John Mooney doesn't want to pick up a cheap foul early. There's only so much you can do. You just got to force him to take a tough shot. And that's the shot that Mike Bray said he wanted to see Mooney hit more of. It's a free throw, basically. It was a free throw, but the backside defenders have to come up and take that away, and they like that ISO situation for John Mooney. Hughes wants another one, mm. and he's got it. The ACC second leading scorer, only behind Jordan Wara, has six from deep. I hope this continues. This is fun. I, I like the back and forth. There's rhythm in this game. There's flow to this game for both teams. Hub hit Gerard. No call as he went down. Gibbs misses for the first time from deep, and it's Mooney on the bounce feed from Fluger. Some good interior play, mid post from three point range when they played and hit each 15 threes. The first matchup earlier this month, the 15 threes for each team, a combined 30, the second most in a Division I game this year. 31 is the combined high total. Mooney gets to the bucket, count it, and the foul as he'll go to the free throw line when we come back with a foul on Sidibe for SU. Hot start, first four minutes. Notre Dame by two as they try and navigate the Syracuse 2-3 zone. Well, we know about that foul line area. That's the weak point of the zone. As the ball comes over, Buddy Beheim has to step up and take the ball away. That little slip's going to be there. And when you slip, look, it's wide open. You've got a world of space there. And Sidibe can't do anything. He can't come out. You'd rather force that 15-foot jumper than give up a layup or a dunk. Just good execution offensively. John Mooney now, the senior from Orlando, 11 straight double-doubles, which ties Luke Herringody for the Notre Dame record for consecutive double-doubles. Herringody, a name Irish fans know well, former Big East Player of the Year, played in 70 games in his NBA career and is now enjoying an overseas career currently in Spain. TJ Gibbs just came off the floor threw up into a bucket as he came off the floor and so their sixth man Dean Goodwin is in but perhaps a little bit earlier than anticipated for Mike Brett yeah, Gibbs was off to a hot start getting a couple tough one or a couple threes to go to keep an eye on that he had two of his first three from deep and imagine what he could do if he didn't feel nauseous sometimes you play dangerous. your best game when you're uh, when you get sick or you have a little injury yeah, Fluger Probably the, the toughest guy on the floor, I, I would say. Rex Fluger is that guy. He, he's kind of the edge on this team. It's a team that needs an edge. Dolezal works from the free throw line up against Durham. A prolific shot blocking force, and he alters it enough to force the miss. Mooney runs the floor, trying to tiptoe like he's in the back of the end zone. And it's out of bounds back to Syracuse. You know, I mentioned in the open, Notre Dame turns it over. Just under 10 a game, 9.8 to be exact, which is terrific I mean that, that's that's an amazing statistic but there are chances you have to take and I do think the, the chances that you have to take will be in transition so as much as you don't want to see that turnover it's a good aggressive turnover now turnover number second in the country only behind Virginia they have off on the three there's Mooney with the rebound he approaches the rebounding part of the double double just about by halftime in most games he's fouled by Dolezal first on the junior from Slovakia Coming your way Saturday, ESPN and the ESPN app have three of the best Big 12 SEC Challenge games. It starts for Eastern with Kansas in the news as of late against Tennessee at the Fog. Coach Callen, number 15, Kentucky in Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. First meeting between those two since 94. And newly minted number one Baylor in Gainesville on a 15-game winning streak to square off against Florida. And as Dallin mentioned earlier, a good opportunity for Florida to get a marquee victory. Rex Fluger gets checked out by Nixon Dorvillian, their first-year trainer. Mitigate some of that blood on his right arm. You know, it used to be that team that people would tune in to watch the number one team in the nation to, to watch them dominate, blow somebody out. Now you, you tune in to see if they get beat. One. Don't push. 
Well, it's just that time of year. Is it beat or beaten? I guess it would be beaten. I will uh, I will permit either one. I right, appreciate it. We're not going to be 10 snobs here today. Thank you. Gibbs is back from the locker room. It's a puke and rally. Hope he's Re all right. Redefining that, I suppose. Yes. Gerard testing the waters from deep. Dolezal secures it. He has been a rebounding machine as of late. Average 10 rebounds in his last six games. Hughes works in, fades away over Fluger. Hughes comes up empty on that possession. Here comes Fluger and Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame went to the zone, and that's where you got to be most careful when, when you're rebounding the basketball. Fluger, no. Jeez, John Moon is everywhere. He's absolutely everywhere on the offensive and defensive glass. Beheim draws the foul. That's the first on Prentice Hub, the sophomore from Maryland for Notre Dame. We talked about the, the three-point shot opportunities for Notre Dame. They're going to have rebounding position because they're anticipating the shot while the defense is rotating. So in some ways, it's more of a challenge for Syracuse to rebound some of these shots as they're trying to get their defense set, particularly when they come early in the shot clock. The Orange now has missed its last five shots. Leshevsky with a quick close out on Beheim. You got to be up there on Gerard as well as he knocks it down. What did he score? 7,000 points in high school? I mean, th this is a guy that you can't let him get rhythm. I'm exaggerating a bit, but he's a guy you got to eliminate rhythm from the game. Started the season more of a volume guy. That was a bank shot. Yeah, Dane Goodwin banks it in. Goodwin coming off a 15-point game in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. And Gerard, who just scored for Syracuse, had 20 against Notre Dame in the first meeting. That's a mismatch with Hughes against Mooney. Leshevsky comes over to, to turn it away. Leshevsky wants three. And that corner is friendly to the Irish right now. Last two buckets coming from that spot on the floor, and they're up by eight. Well, I'm talking to Coach Bray earlier today. The best shot they might get is within the first five to ten seconds of the shot clock, and that is true because the defense has not gotten established and has not stopped the basketball. Sidibe collects and puts it in to stop the run for Notre Dame. Hub with the drive, and the block called on Sidibe. That's number two on the Orange Big Man. Uh, we talked about this last time they met, January 4th. 33-point baskets made between the two teams. So, so you have to be there on the catch, particularly when it, when it comes to understanding that personnel. And as the ball moves in transition, defense scrambling, trying to find the, the, the three-point shooters in transition is difficult. And John Mooney does a great job moving the basketball. So many bigs trail, they catch and they look, they stop. And when you stop, it allows the defense to get set. What's the order of priority for a defense in transition coming back of what they should be looking to stop? Well, it depends what you're doing. It depends if you're a zone team, it depends if you're a man team. If you're a man team, you want to stop the basketball first and foremost. If you're a zone team, you got to get back to spots. They also have to stop the basketball, protect the basket. That's a, that's a really tough question because it also depends on who you're playing. It's really more personnel driven and opponent driven than anything else. John, you answered like a lawyer. Every every question has the answer. It depends. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, from my perspective. Quincy Garrier into the game for Syracuse as well, helping to anchor the bottom of that defense along with Dolajai and Hughes. Gerard and Beheim up top. Leshevsky hit that last three for Notre Dame. And that has not been his forte this year. Well, Gibbs, feeling good, back onto the floor, floats it in. I don't know how he's feeling, but he's playing really well. And that's, that's going to make this five guys on the floor that can all make something happen. It's a tough matchup right now for Syracuse. Gibbs takes it away and takes the bump from Bayheim. A little action after the whistle as well. Yeah, we're seeing a little. This was a, a tiny bit of action. 
I actually like this from Joe Girard. Give me that rock. A little chippy in the ACC. Getting the ball inside out, moving the basketball, wrapping around, making simple, good passes. Got things going for Notre Dame, but if you don't stop Elijah Hughes, particularly in transition, he can beat you up from all over the court. The shots are going in, even corner bank shots. And the shots continue to fall right out of the timeout. Watch Jim Beheim. He just kind of puts his hands up in the air, which is the Jim Beheim pose. That'll be the statue. You kind of just say, guys, what are we doing? I have a timeout. There are four guys on the floor. We have to stop from the three-point line. Know your personnel. 35 Notre Dame threes. Gary A from the baseline, rejected by Durham. Boy, he has been a force inside already. Second leading shot blocker on average, about two and a half a game, only behind one of his assistant coaches, Ryan Humphrey. And Durham goes back to it and gets fouled by Hughes. Coming up later tonight on ESPN, the long-awaited NBA regular season debut of Zion Williamson. His last college game was all the way back at the end of March of last year. He goes for the Pelicans against the Spurs, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN, and the ESPN app from New Orleans. You know what's funny about that? There, there was a part of me just, you know, watching games and stuff, and you see that promo come up, and I'm like, man, what a, I'm making such a big deal about this. But then right away I go, well, where am I going to watch the game? <laughs> I mean, without a doubt, I, I want to watch that. He only got to play nine minutes in Summer League. They have some preseason action, but as they get his body right, they also make a push for the playoffs, trying to get to that final eighth spot or better. I feel like Syracuse is settling for tough shots. Notre Dame is pushing it, moving the basketball, and getting what they want. And this is a bit of a smaller lineup right now with Mooney off the floor for Notre Dame. Gibbs takes a bump as he goes down, was looking for a call, didn't get it. Well, Mike Bray talked about it. He liked the smaller lineup at times. How about Gerard fearlessly to the basket? What's the advantage for them of having Mooney, the nation's leading rebounder, off the floor? Look, it's, it's not like an addition by subtraction, but it's a smaller lineup that's going to move the defense a little bit more. You bring Mooney back in, and please believe he's going to be on the offensive glass. Not really an advantage having him off the floor. And when you go smaller, it doesn't mean that it means John, John Mooney's off the floor. It means you're playing with one less big. So more around the perimeter, more cutting. More like a man offense against the zone. Double team quickly comes down on Durham. The Irish whip it around the perimeter. Durham with the size advantage there on Dolajai. Some foul trouble starting to accumulate for the Orange. Dolajai two, Sidibe two. Well, and foul trouble is a byproduct of moving the basketball side to side really well, which means longer closeouts. The longer closeouts like the one right there. Merrick Dolajai just closed out too hard, didn't break down. And he's replaced by Sidibe. Meanwhile, expect to see Elijah Hughes on the floor for just about every minute of the game. Number 33 for Syracuse, averaging 38 minutes a game. It's the most in the league and six most in the country. They're necessary minutes, too. Hey, you are nowhere near the same team without Elijah Hughes on the floor. He is, I don't want to call him the sole playmaker, but he's the guy that from any spot on the floor, he can create and get you a basket. And when you're limited offensively, which this Syracuse team at times has been, you need a playmaker. And Elijah Hughes is that guy. The Orange the last couple games has found success with points in the paint. 36 points, 34 points in each of their last two, or in their last two games. There's highest totals of the season. Garrier with the extra effort and gets the bucket going to the line where he's a 59% free throw shooter. Garrier's got a little fire to him. When he comes in, he's kind of that emotional spark, gets after it, plays physically. And if you can create second chance opportunities, it's gonna be what allows you to get back in this basketball game. 12 points in the paint of the 24 for the Orange, back to within six. As Notre Dame has led by as many as 11.
Gerard across the lane, steps through, and with a soft touch, delivers to Moore. He's just got a great poise to his game. It never seems like he's rushing. You see that from a lot of young freshmen, where it seems like they're playing at too fast a pace. It's almost like it's one speed. He plays like a senior. He's got good poise, good feel for the game. Goodwin just sent it a little long. Here comes Gerard again. You talked about his poise. Is that something that you think he developed in high school? Is it something that's coached? How do you get that? He's played a lot of basketball. I mean, you don't score that many points without playing a lot of ball. And one of the issues we've had with the way things are, as you see him knock down another three, kids don't play enough. Everybody has a personal coach, an individual skills coach, and they practice dribbling with 15 basketballs, yet they can't. They don't really develop any feel for the game. In a five-on-five, three-on-three, even a one-on-one -on -one situation, guys need to play more. SU on a 10-0 run with the opportunity to continue in the long three from Hub. Sidibe runs the floor, flings it back in, and Beheim finds it. Hughes, five steps beyond the arc, another three. The Orange back in front, a 13-0 run. It's not that Notre Dame has not gotten good looks. They just haven't gotten them to fall. And the problem is those misses have led to some transition opportunities where the defense hasn't been able to stop the basketball. And there have been plenty of good looks from three for both teams. That time it's Goodwin getting Notre Dame's first basket in about four minutes. Elijah Hughes makes every look a good look. He's got the ability to shoot from anywhere on the floor. He creates opportunities, even without the ball in his hands. Mismatch there as Gerard sends it. And step back on Moody. Look out. Joe Gerard is on fire to start. Make a gif out of that one. Jeez. Love the isolations that Jim Beheim creates and encourages for his playmakers. I think Joe Gerard heard me talk about Elijah Hughes as being their, their sole and primary playmaker. Lesheski, nifty look for Mooney with the reverse lane. And you're talking about the isolations for Syracuse. It's not a very complex offense. No, it's not a complex. Sometimes the, the simplest offenses are the toughest ones to stop because I say this a lot. Less absolutes. Guys can create like that. Now, that's not in there. As they say, that's not in. <laughs> that's when I remembered that my ex 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 boyfriend actually went to law school. So I called him. He didn't call me back. If your ex 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 boyfriend isn't a lawyer, it's in the early going, Mike and John. All right, Kevin, well, I think the biggest question right now is who's the fourth and fifth best teams in the ACC? Because Florida State, Louisville, Duke, all top 10 teams have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Well, we'll tell you in March. That's kind of what, what the deal is this year. I mean, it's an interesting year in the ACC, particularly when you, you think of its limitations. And the limitations come in the form of opportunities to get 20 resume wins. I think you got to win a lot on the road. If you want to build a resume, you've got to win road wins. And you've got to sneak one or two from some of those top teams, like a Duke of Florida State Louisville. Clemson has already done that, picking up a win against Duke at home. And Syracuse, foul there from Buddy Beheim sends it to a one and one. Syracuse has let to yet to lose an ACC road game. Here's Dan Goodwin at the free throw line. See him in the middle of that zone tonight, along with John Mooney. And his name may not be at the top of the list, but should be in consideration for six man of the year right now in the ACC, averaging 12 points a game. Hughes, the matchup with Fluger. And you mentioned earlier as Fluger got shaken off there by Hughes, doesn't look like he's moving at 100%. No, but there's only so much you could do when you look at the space that was created by the isolation. They just cleared the floor. It was a clear isolation for Elijah Hughes. And I love that they do that. It's one of the hardest things to stop. 13 points already for Hughes. Hub gets his first points of the night after missing his first two threes. That was all set up by John Mooney. John Mooney looked away. He looked opposite. He went to the opposite wing. Ball fake. Defense went with the ball fake. And then Hub was wide open for a three. Make a fake a pass, make a pass. It, it seems to work, we'll say almost every time. Whew. There's Behind. I like the, the back and forth rhythm in this game is good, and it actually facilitates better offense. Why is that? Let's see if this goes in. I'll tell you why. Look, 
Rhythm is everything when you're shooting the basketball. Rhythm's everything when you're moving the basketball. Rhythm in the game keeps you from over fouling. It's, it's just reality. The NBA does this very well. Early in the game, they get control of the game by basically establishing what they're going to call. Throughout the course of the game, they loosen things up. They, they allow the play to dictate what's going to happen in the game. And I feel like these both these teams have helped create good rhythm in the game. Mooney sometimes does it single-handedly. Grabbing yet another rebound, up to 11 points, four boards. Gibbs wants another. We learned just a couple minutes ago, on Monday, Gibbs was down with the flu, yesterday was recovering, and today feeling better until he vomited a couple minutes into the game, but has not limited his scoring. Beheim with the drive and kick for Garrier. Missed it. He's just four for 20 from three this year. And the lob, the pass off from Gerard. Sidibe tracks it down. 14 on the shot clock for the Orange. Beheim takes a look at the shot clock. Six to shoot, lowers the shoulder against Leszewski, and that's an offensive foul as he cleared out, and that's three fouls on Buddy Beheim. And this is actually great defense. When you don't have a good driving angle as an offensive player, it's hard to make this turn. He just goes right into the defender. Easy call. This game, more good stuff. All right, but they're talking about red panda at halftime. I want to know if Crispin's over her routine. Does she need to change it up? Absolutely not. She's an international treasure. I actually, I actually got to meet her, and she couldn't be a nicer person. And when I heard about her unicycle being stolen at San Francisco Airport, I wanted to fly there and make something happen. She may need to mix things up a little bit. I, I get it. Is it your number one halftime act? I, you know, I'm kind of old school. I like the Budweiser dunk team. Nothing like dudes jumping off of trampolines and <laughs> throwing it down. The Chicago boys are good these days, too. The Jesse Clark tumblers? Is that one? I'm a little over quick change, no offense. Jesse White, excuse Jesse me. White, yeah, yeah, get it straight. It's been a couple of years since I lived in Chicago, okay? Is it the Green Panda, too? <laughs> no, I love, I love Red Panda. I think she's terrific, and she's a lovely lady. And good luck. I would love to see anybody else try to do what she does. I have Farnham, get yourself up on a unicycle, throw a <laughs> ball on your head, will you? <laughs> and if you can't do it, then we get to cut your hair with the, the ball on your head. <laughs> That's always a good look. Along with John Crispin, Mike Cousins, glad to have you with us. Notre Dame up by one over Syracuse. C.J. Gibbs goes to the bench. It's been a plethora of threes today. The Orange, six of 13 from deep. Notre Dame, seven of 17 from three. And these two teams among the top 25 of teams in the country that get their scoring from three-point field goals. Forced shot from Fluger, offensive board for Mooney. From the elbow, that is pure. Wow, we, we talked to Mike Bray, and he talked about getting quicker shots, because sometimes the quickest shot is the best shot. And he said they went to a 20-second shot clock at times in practice. And it seems like they're playing with a 20-second shot clock right now, which I love. I think the whole game should go 24 seconds. Even high school, goodness gracious, high school with no shot clock well, is high, brutal. High school, there are, what, 42 states that still don't have a shot clock, period? Oh, goodness, it's... That's bad. Inexcusable. Gerard Long, Bryson Goodine on the rebound, who's into the game because Beheim, Dolajai, and Sidibe, who gets the ball here, all have foul trouble. Beheim with three, most notably. Let me put it this way. A shorter shot clock actually facilitates the development of feel. Everybody has to be involved. Everybody has to be engaged. You play with a better sense of urgency. And right now, I think that's part of the key to Notre Dame's offensive success. They're moving the basketball with a purpose. Mooney hanging out in the short corner is turned away between Sidibe and Garrier, and Sidibe is holding his face down at the other end of the floor, so it's a four on five at the moment for the Orange. Stays here inside a minute to go in the first half. Sidibe got clipped, so he went up to try and guard Mooney. Is it on the way up or the way down? I think it's going to be on the way down. Best guess is the way down there? I don't know. It's pretty bad when I can't figure it out in slow-mo. 
So Dolajai back in here on offense with his two fouls. But Jim Beheim mm. plays guys with two fouls quite a bit. That's the first three of the year for Bryson Goodon, who is 0 for 13 coming into this game. Well, I like him on, on the top of defense. He moves well, he's active, he's athletic, gets his hand, he's communicating very well. Defense still gives up an open three. Gibbs missed it. Lasheski tipped it. And an opportunity for the Orange to take the final shot of the first half with the game clock and shot clock just about in sync. This has been an incredibly fast first half, but again, great rhythm, great flow to this basketball game. And that's why I see the score 44 42. Just about on pace for a repeat wow. of what they did last time. Hughes with a pull up. It'll have to be quick here for the Irish to close out the first half. Hub from way deep. Nearly hit that one from Mishawaka. It's off to end the first 20 minutes, 46-42. We had a quick first half. You know what that reminded me? We had three best friends. They're waiting for us. Sure they are. Kevin Connors, Sean Farnham, Dallin Cuff. So what can Notre Dame, a very disciplined team, do here in the second half? Well, this is going to sound strange because no one's ever said it, but I think they need to foul more. Now, it's, it's not just put your hands on a guy for no reason. It's got to be selective fouling. It's probably a first for a broadcaster to say you got to foul more, but if not first, you last. Look, it's got to be selective fouling. If you get isolated the way Jim Beheim's been able to create space and isolate Elijah Hughes, this is a great opportunity on the spin. Just hammer down at the basketball because what you're doing is you're eliminating that isolation play from the game. You get your defense reset, reset, reestablished. You see the basketball, you've got a better chance to defend the play. I think the rhythm was great, but at times, if Notre Dame just selectively fouled a little bit more, you might be able to eliminate that rhythm from the offensive end for Syracuse. The Orange closed out the half. 27 to 12 was their run. They try to extend it here. Beheim down the lane, scores. Talking about points in the paint for Syracuse the last couple games. Their two highest scoring totals in the paint of the season. 36-34 points. First time these two teams met is an 88-87 Notre Dame win. Hughes from the corner, right in front of the Syracuse bench with a bullseye from three, and he's got 18. That's a great find from Joe Girard. He read that play perfectly, kind of camouflage action going to the basket, and then you kick it out to Elijah Hughes, who, Hughes who, who doesn't get that many easy looks, but he makes a lot of tough ones. Second leading scorer in the ACC behind Jordan Wara. A number of bodies rising to the rim there. Durham in the action, Sidibe as well. By the way, I bet you didn't think you were going to hear, if you ain't first, you're, you're last. In our, our second half open. I, I didn't even, that wasn't even planned. A little Ricky Bobby reference. Off the inbounds. Three clips the rim for Hub. And Mooney's got it back. Here comes Fluger hard charging, and the left hand lay is good. And this is where Notre Dame has to be better defensively. It's an opportunity to see the basketball, get your defense set, and try your best to avoid those isolation situations. If you get a bad matchup, I'm telling you, fouling's not a bad option. They commit the fewest fouls per game in college basketball, just about 12 a game, and they've been in the top 15 in that category in each of the last 10 years. You don't foul, you share the basketball well, you don't turn it over, that's a recipe for success. At the shot clock expiration, it's Hughes again. That's not a foul situation. That was actually good defense. Can't slow him down right now. Hughes has 20. He's the last one to touch it. I don't know. I felt like that was off Elijah Hughes. I'd be a terrible official. I accept that. But your banter with the coaches, I think, would be 10 out of 10. <laughs> yes, it would. Nearly down for Behan, who did sit at the end of the first half with three fouls. When players get into foul trouble, Jim Beheim, 14th most in the country, allowing them to play. They play an available 51% of the available minutes when they've got foul trouble. Wait, say that stat again. It's you called really two, read the media guy here. Two that foul, that's a Ken Palm stat. Ken so Palm, shouts okay. to Ken Pomeroy, an ACC graduate from Virginia Tech. It's two foul participation is the stat. So Syracuse players are allowed to play 51% of available minutes once they've picked up two fouls. And Jim Beheim is 14th in the country in that stat. Now, a lot of that comes from the way they play defense. You can protect a guy better in the zone. 
So that's a big part of that. Also, if you don't have, uh, you know, 10, 11 guys where you can go that deep, you might only need one tonight. They're famously not an exceptionally deep team. This year, no exception. Hughes now with 22. Man. Timeout, Notre Dame. Yeah, pour some water on Elijah Hughes. Sizzling. See Kansas and Tennessee, Kentucky, Texas Tech, Baylor and Florida among those matches with College Game Day coming to you live from Lawrence, Kansas, 11 Eastern on ESPN. Three minutes into the second half. Syracuse leads Notre Dame 55-44. Second time these two are squaring off this year. Foul is on Nate Lyshevsky for Notre Dame. Mike Cousins, John Crispin here from Notre Dame. Good look out of the timeout for Notre Dame. Just didn't get it to fall. I feel like they've gotten the looks that they've wanted most of this game. Just haven't been able to get the stops. Now going back to the zone. The hope here is that you can corral Elijah Hughes into more of your help. Because the isolations have really hurt the Irish. Hughes has got 22. Had 15 at halftime. Career high for him came earlier this season against Georgia Tech as he dropped in 33. Dolezal with a strong finish from the block. You know, he's the third leading rebounder in ACC play. Find John Mooney and Garrison Brooks. They do now. And he weighs about 190, maybe. You know what that's all about. Lyshevsky with another good look. I'm 190 after Thanksgiving dinner, Jim. With Eskimo gear on. <laughs> Dolezal goes opposite block and right through Mooney. Yeah, Merrick Dolezal, the best thing about this move is just the fact that it was assertive. He turned, yeah, he lost the ball a little bit, but, but he had intentions of scoring. He had the right side of the floor he opened up. There was no dig down on the help. You're not going to give up an open three on that side. Merrick Dolezal just being assertive on the offensive end. I'll tell you, look, the way this Syracuse team is playing, the way Elijah Hughes is playing, they could slide their way up in, into the upper echelon of this conference because of the fact that it's so wide open. You got the top three right now, all teams in the top ten, Florida State, Louisville, and Duke. Seminoles have won nine straight. And then the second tier right now, NC State, Syracuse, Virginia, Clemson, all within a couple games of each other. And there's no predicting anything in this league or, in fact, any league right now. Dan Goodwin. You're right. There, there's no predicting. And, and I would say this, as an analyst, the, the most, the wisest thing I could say is that I have no idea what's going to happen. A anytime we predict at this point, it's more an expression of our ignorance. Because right now, it is so wide open. Really, college basketball is that way this year. Or just our desire to be right. Because eventually, somebody's going to be right. But most of us have been wrong. Yeah, my, like my little five-year-old nephew. He, he's right in the NCAA tournament. But... Again, predict the underpredictable. That's kind of college basketball. Sometimes picking by mascot or team color. It's a fun 15 and efficient 9 of 15 from the floor. And he's done this with two things, space and freedom. He's had space to do his work. He hasn't seen a lot of double teams, hasn't gotten fouled a lot. And if he's got the freedom to clear out, just go for himself, he's going to be one of the toughest guys in the conference to stop. And he never comes off the floor. Played all 20 minutes in the first half. Luger much more looking to share than he is to score for Notre Dame. No Mooney on the floor, so instead it's Durham who gets into the middle of the zone to score. Well, and the best thing about making that shot is it's going to draw that defense in. The guards are going to have to suck back in and take that away. Biggs on the backside may have to step up. Gerard with a flailing attempt at a three, and Sidibe cleans it up to stick it back in off glass. They have thought about the three. Sidibe with the hook. He's yet to miss from the floor. He's five of five and has 10 points. You shoot a high percentage when you take good shots. And the best thing about that shot wasn't the actual shot. It was the footwork. He 
Even with quick passing, Syracuse has been there step for step on this possession with Notre Dame. Something that's plagued them as of late, not being able to get out on shooters. Gerard with a three on three break. Fluger tips it. Cross court for Hughes. And Dolajai underneath takes the foul from Durham. We really have to, to give big guys credit when they do sit down. I mean, this is just good footwork. It takes this step in, shows the basketball, defense goes. Good footwork, good pivot. Left shoulder, right hook. That's pretty basketball. I mean, those are things that you, you work on, but in the games and with the pace of the game being what it is, it's easy to mess that up and travel. Five for five, a great start for Sidibe. Most he scored this year was 12 against Colgate in every year kind of game for the Orange. This is usually an every year blowout. Colgate fans send mean tweets to Mike Cousins. It's at Mike Cousins. I was just beating you to the punch. There. I don't know if we, I don't know if we have a big contingent of Colgate fans. I prefer not to receive electronic vitriol from Hamilton, but sometimes it happens. Dolajai leads the break. Sidibe runs the floor and stuffs it. A dozen for the big man, Sidibe. And that's going to be a challenge for Notre Dame. When missed shots lead to runouts for Syracuse, and they don't really have to execute in the half court, they get easy buckets in transition. It'd be hard to, to mount a comeback now down 13. Why are the Irish faltering on offense? Well, honestly, I, I think they're just missing shots. They've gotten good looks. I mean, this is a good look. They've gotten this shot, but a lot of them haven't fallen in. And I think Mooney needs to be on the floor the entire time. He's their best offensive rebounder, and if he doesn't get the rebound, he at least does a good job of keeping the possession alive. But just getting a handle, the ball keeps Syracuse from getting out and running. Fluger, after hitting that three, gets called for the foul. This is his first. Look, you asked the question. I mean, here you go. The, the, the rebound is almost the first pass of the transition. Here you go. They're out and running. They've already got numbers. You step up to stop the ball, but the two bigs for Notre Dame aren't getting back. That is really difficult to defend, and by difficult, I mean impossible. It's weird, some coaches, they go back and forth, they go, how many opportunities am I really gonna get on the offensive glass? Because I give up more in transition by attacking the offensive glass, yet the numbers really don't add up. I see a lot of teams just get back. What do you think the smartest thing to do is? Again, that's personnel. I mean, I'm gonna go political with this one and just say, well, it depends on your personnel. You know, I, I like sending Are you one sure guy. you shouldn't be in Iowa? No, no, I don't need to be anywhere near that. <laughs> uh, I, I tell you, although I think I'd win in a debate, just saying. I think it, it really comes down to the personnel. If you do have one guy that you trust to go to the offensive glass, like a John Mooney, then you got to let him go. But everybody else can't let anyone get behind him. And Sadibe got behind the defense in transition. John Mooney, double-double watch. Our latest check-in, 13 points, seven rebounds for the Notre Dame big man, who has 14 double-doubles this year, 11 in a row. Pretty crazy that it would be a story if he didn't get a double-double. One second to shoot. Mike Eads comes over to try and create a little space between Goodwin and Dolajai. This is where you don't foul. Don't listen to what I said at halftime. Shot clock violation. Yeah, Rex Fluger right now is saying he kicked his legs out, and I always wonder, could that be an offensive foul? When some of these guys take that shot, Elijah Hughes kind of kicks his legs out trying to get the call. Shouldn't that be an offensive foul at some point? Well, it could be a flop. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Around and in for Prentice Hub. Coming off a career-high 25. And just five so far. another isolation and the help late to get there an easy bucket for Behan what help there's no help I mean look at the amount of space uh, look, we're gonna take another look at that because there's so much space I feel like I could score right now near 40 years old very limited physically I feel like I could score with that much space is that currently or always very limited physically yeah, no, I, used, I used to be able to handle my own I've seen the grainy VHS tape on YouTube I know what the truth is Buddy Behan, look, we, we 
we've seen this for Elijah Hughes. He's one of the best offensive players in this conference, possibly in this country. But Buddy Beheim, he's got all the space in the world. And wherever you may roam on the ESPN app. Do you see that dude's jacket? It's like, I don't know what you call that. A lot of flair. Style. Style, yeah. Rex Fluger, oh. he's, he's got something in his nose now, too. I mean, didn't he got a bloody nose, too? Man. What a day medically for Notre Dame. We had a early vomit from TJ Gibbs, and then Fluger got wrapped on his right arm earlier because of blood, and now has it in the left nostril as well. But he also seems like he's just limping a little bit. The gait doesn't look normal. If you don't know, I'm not talking about the, the backyard gate. That's G-A-I-T, yes. Syracuse fans just went, Gary Gate? Why are you talking about him during a basketball game? Now, now and then I say something quasi-intelligent. <laughs> Mooney gets the free throw at 66-57. I'll tell you, this, this is one made three for Notre Dame. Uh, uh, really starts with a stop here. Away from being a ball game again. Notre Dame hasn't had the same rhythm offensively. Another clear out isolation for Buddy Beheim. He doesn't hit it here, but you like that look they gave him the last time. I do. I like the fact that they're trying to get him involved in the offense. It's not just for this game. It's also for the next game. Keeping him going is key. He's been relatively quiet today with just six points. I'll tell you, when you think about what he's been able to do coming into this game, you need that second, third option. And that's big. I'm telling you, we're now a six-point basketball game coming off of a good stop. This is a big possession for Syracuse. Gerard on the drive, and he's fouled by Gibbs on the way up with just six on the shot clock. You talked about selective fouling. Is that one you wanted? No, I think you got to force him to take a tough shot. And that is a deep three. But let me tell you guys, kids today practice those shots. Thanks a lot, Steph Curry. Uh, kids practice those deep shots. And, and all of these guys are strong enough to shoot that as if it's a regular jumper. So it may look like it's deep, but it's still, if you're in rhythm, that's a high percentage three. They're just stretching it out. They're going to Granger. And then they're saying, I'm going to shoot this from Niles, Michigan. Keep it going. Syracuse backs all the remaining four players yeah. off Why, here why because do you they think? Because they know Joe Girard, yeah. who's number one in free throw shooting in the country, <laughs> is going to hit him. That's a great statement right there. I mean, that's like the, I don't think, it's not arrogant by any means. It's just like, look, we're not going to give you anything in transition. The guy's going to knock down two, two foul shots. That's right. not a good shot. Girard is now 48 for 50 and on pace to break the Syracuse single season record by a good margin. 90.9 percent set by Jerry McNamara back in the 0203 season. Who is on the Syracuse bench? Secretly, Jerry McNamara is rooting against him because <laughs> we are competitors. And Gerard for three. I actually love that shot. A lot of people say bad shot. I see confidence in that jumper. The fact that you look for that and pull it. That's an expression of confidence. And every coach I ever played for is going, of course you love that shot. <laughs> it looked good coming out of his hand. Three to shoot. It's got to be behind. He's rejected by Mooney. The Irish get the ball back. Notre Dame on the hunt for its first home ACC victory of the season. Syracuse yet to lose in an ACC road game this season. Good win. Spinning 14-footer. What was that? He went full tornado on that jump shot. He didn't even get squared. He just kind of jumped and turned at the same time. Six-point game with nine minutes to go. And Elijah Hughes stepped out of bounds. I gotta take a look at this. Did he just elevate and turn? Let's see. Yeah. Yes, he was facing the wrong way. There's a reason why it wasn't that well defended. It's because he was looking at the opposite basket when he shot. It's like playing a game of dizzy bat, and then you have to turn around and shoot a basketball. Who would play a game of dizzy bat? It's fun to watch other people fail at it. But... <laughs>
<laughs> Love that. You know what? You put Red Panda up there, you give me Dizzy Bat on one side, Red Panda on the other. That's a great It's just become clearer. You, you don't know how to have fun, John. It's a shame. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Ten to shoot for Notre Dame. Mooney thinking he was going to do a good win. Rejected by Sidibe, and Hub lets it fly and hits it. Insanity. T.J. Gibbs with a foul. When Hub let this go, I was, we had a great angle right behind him. It looked like it was good. Part of me wanted to say, that's good. I mean, look, he, he let it fly with, what, three on the clock and somehow gets it to go. We had a three-point basketball game. That's a big shot. Sometimes better be lucky than good. Combination doesn't hurt either. Such a good shot. It drew a jacket toss for Jim Beheim. It's funny how that's become a thing, right? Well, it really became an inception kind of thing because he wore a jacket earlier this year with a photo of him throwing his jacket at Duke a couple years ago. This one pregame peak, I think it just had the uh, Carrier Dome at night photo inside the jacket. Does anybody buy off the rack these days <laughs> that aren't broadcasters? Count of three, he's got eight. DeVoes 14, Alvarado 13, the rambling wreck, one point lead on the cards, Mike. A dangerous team at times this year. They have yet to win a game at home, and the Young Center is no easy place to play. Louisville has won four straight, trying to tie their best start in their short ACC history to get to seven and one. Meanwhile, Syracuse looking to go to five and three. Notre Dame on the hunt for its first conference home win of the season, which would get them to three and four. Elijah Hughes with a game high 22. And he stays at that mark as John Mooney gets his ninth rebound. 14 points, nine rebounds for Mooney. One board shy of his 12th straight double-double, which would be a new Notre Dame record. And earlier in this second half, I said how much I liked that they were going to Buddy Beheim, but in, at the same time, you take a little away from Elijah Hughes, who was the hot hand. Beheim thwarted by Leshesky. Gerard never afraid to launch. A three point game now as SU has missed their last six field goal tries. Mooney one on one with soft touch. John Mooney leads the Irish with 16 points. And he's got to be able to do that. If Sadiba is going to come up and take that jumper away, he's got to use the body and get that thing to the rim. Great execution offensively. Seven straight for Notre Dame to make it a one point game. Got to dig down. Got to dig down. Hughes denied. Gibbs had the rebound. Jump ball. Delivers it the other way. Later tonight on ESPN, after Zion's NBA debut, stick around for Sports Center with SVP post game coverage and reactions from the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans. The best from the NBA. It'll be LeBron at MSG. Much more tonight, and a preview of Tigers' first start of the new year at Torrey Pines. Sports Center with SVP after Spurs Pelicans on ESPN and the ESPN app. I'd look to get Mooney back in there. The kind of Going to run him up at some point. I like him at the top of the key there. Cutting baseline. It's Goodwin to put the Irish in the lead for the first time since a minute and a half to go in the first half when it was 42-41. Timeout Syracuse. We have to say, you know, 
Foul line, short corner, weakest spots in the zone. John Mooney's been effective when he gets the ball there. Great read on the baseline. Sadibe has had to come up to take that shot opportunity away. That's why the baseline's open. This is where you want to clear, give space. Remember, space and freedom, that's where Elijah Hughes has been at his best. Gerard to a contested three, and Andolajai gets called for the push-off, trying to grab the loose ball. I, I just don't know why. When Elijah Hughes has the ball top of the key, why you don't get back to just creating space and let him attack? He's the best player on the floor, hands down. Particularly offensively, I mean, he's the best player on the floor. Give him a chance to turn this thing back around. And a short shot ends up with Dolezal picking up his fourth foul. First player in the game to hit that mark. Goodwin lets it fly. Beheim against Mooney. Second chance point for Buddy Beheim. First off, great no call. Wall up from John Mooney. It was not a foul, but Buddy Beheim stuck with it. Good physical play from the young guy. First points for the Orange in about five minutes. Sidibe lowered the arm, an easy call. As he's got his fourth. I really like that play from Buddy Beheim. That was physical toughness. It was sticking with the play. It was attacking the basket, going into the shot blocker, and staying with it. Mooney, the opportunity to put Notre Dame back in front. Sidibe to the bench for Syracuse. Gary A back in as Gibbs sits for Notre Dame. Second in the country in double doubles, only behind Nathan Knight of William and Mary. One off of his mark of 15. Ayheim's crossover, the lay-in is there, 72-70. Defensively, Notre Dame should just play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Full court one-on-one. -on -one. See if you can get a stop, because right now, if you don't win your defensive battle, you're not going to win the game. Why is there no help defense there? Well, they're getting spaced out. You can't give up open shots to good shooters. But additionally, when you create so much space as an offense and almost go four corners, that's a problem, too. Transition. Offensive player gets behind, you get beat. You get so much space, it requires a longer closeout. So you want to dig down a little bit, but not leave your man. Buddy Beheim, he has been effective in this second. At home, Dallin Cuff in a dogfight with James Banks and Georgia Tech. Yeah, Louisville's just really not defending enough. You just kind of see it there. You top pass over the top. They're not connected defensively. Georgia Tech limited offensively, shooting 50% from the floor right now. Who's Tiger. that? Holy Mount Zion. Who is that? Is it real? Is it happening tonight? How, is How would you ESPN? not know? Have you watched our network? It is. I'm excited. <laughs> You'll see it in about an hour over on ESPN, the NBA debut of Zion, Mike. Are, are you surprised to hear Sean Farnham is excited about something? He's just an excitable guy. Sean and I worked for the first time on Saturday, and I've never met anyone with more non-caffeinated energy than Sean yeah. Farnham. I at least need an espresso. <laughs> Good one with a shot fake, trying to feed Mooney. He and was there was Hughes waiting. One more shot fake away from having a good look. And you look at the updated numbers. You look January 4th, 15 threes for each team. Notre Dame's kind of on pace. They might need a couple to go to win this one. Dolezal with strength and grabs his own miss. He double dribbled, for sure. He definitely did. I, I did not think that they were going to call that because it looked like both official was blocked. You see it. I mean, he dribbles out of this, picks it up. Yeah, you see, we, we could barely see it, but he did. Just to take my word for it kind of thing. 74, 73, 15 to go. When they met just a week or two and a half weeks ago, it was a one-point Notre Dame win. 
Goodwin pounding in on Girard. Long rebound, Garrier. And an inadvertent whistle from Mike Eats. Yeah, that's a tough one, because is it a travel? And I think that's probably why Mike Eats blew the whistle, is thinking that might be a travel. Yep. I like that. Look, officials even get a my bad every now and then. We all get my bads. Mike Eats has seen fast-paced games each of the last two nights here and then saw St. Joe's, one of the quickest teams yesterday. It's a lot of mileage on just 94 feet. He was trying to back down Fluger. It's no easy task. Just five on the shot clock. Dolajai with the spin and scores. That's big. Yeah, that's big. I mean, you think about that. That could have been a jump ball. Who's changed the possession arrow as the player goes down to the floor? And Dolajai, good aggressive move. Again, with space and freedom, it's easy for offensive players to be effective. Three point looks have not been there for Notre Dame. Gurrier came out of nowhere to turn that away. Goodwin with a fake, lets it fly, short rim. And a good call, Jim Beheim. slow it down. Why? Because you've been able to get what you want in an isolation situation for Notre Dame. You've got to win your individual battle if you want to win the game. I like this, just call him off. I don't need a ball screen, just go. Hughes goes to work, the fadeaway. And Mooney's got it to secure the rebound and his 12th straight double-double, a new Irish record. As he goes past Luke Herringote. From the corner, it's trouble for Goodwin. Fluger was calling for it. Good defense. The open shot not there. <laughs> Syracuse with numbers and Gerard backs it out. Oh, Rex Fluger tried to get the foul and put his hand up. That was great defensive possession. I feel like the Syracuse defense has kind of evolved a bit and it's done so with its personnel. The more you play together, the better chemistry you're going to have. The defense has gotten better. And the offense has looked a little bit different as well. Getting points in the paint and securing another offensive rebound. Gerard fighting inside. The foul comes from Gibbs with 43 seconds, a necessity there for the guard. Coming your way Saturday on ESPN, the ESPN app. Three of the best Big 12 SEC Challenge games. Kansas will be shorthanded as they host Tennessee at the Fog. Number 15, Kentucky in Lubbock to face Texas Tech. And number one, Baylor. The Bears are there for just a second time. Travel to Gainesville to take on Florida and put their 15-game winning streak on the line. Mike Bray said the number today would be double-digit threes if his team was going to come away a winner. They've hit 11 today and held Syracuse to just eight. And yet, down by seven with under 45 seconds to go. It's really more about not being able to get the big stops. Mooney off the fingertips, no, and the tip is there for their first basket in more than four minutes. Notre Dame takes a timeout as they have some work to do on the defensive end. Well, the first time they met, it was a one-point victory for Notre Dame, a combined 33s between these two teams. That was a deciding factor in this yeah. game. In that game, what has been the deciding factor today? Well, simple isolations that lead to baskets for Syracuse. Like Notre Dame offensively has been good. Now, good in spurts in the second half, but if you can't stop the man with the ball, you're going to have problems, especially if that man's Elijah Hughes. In the second half, it was also Buddy Mayhem. Yes. Now, yes, you want to help. Now, the, the best way to help in a situation like that may be just to run and jump and get the ball out of his hands. Because you see, when you're spaced out, covering a guy like Buddy Mayheim, a simple dig down is not going to do it. Buddy Mayheim has been spaced out 30 feet from the basket. Joe Girard spaced out 30 feet from the basket. It's hard to help off and give up that wide open three. So at times, you may want to run and jump. Just get the ball out of Elijah Hughes' hands. 
because the one on one defense has been the issue for Notre Dame down the stretch. The score was tied at 70 with 443 to go. Syracuse the advantage since then and they've tied their season high today once again 36 points in the paint. It's been a strong point for them over the last three games as they try and extend this three game winning streak out to four for the first time in ACC play since the 16 17 season. I think Syracuse wants to get the ball to Joe Girard in this situation. I always wanted to be that guy. My brother was always that guy. I still resent him for that. You know, the guy at the end of the game that whoever gets it, your job is to give it to them. Yeah, I think Joe Girard's that guy. Garrier with the free throw, only 59% at the line. And for the Irish at two and four, could be a very different season in a multitude of ways. So many close games decided by fewer than 10 points, and this is right on track to be another one. Well, look, they're made up of good players. I think that's been the, the big question is, what is it? What's missing? Maybe it's a bit of that edge. Yeah, get these big shots to go. Garrier went down hard after the three from Gibbs. The Irish had the trap in the corner. And a very quick whistle there. Foul is on Hub. I just wonder in situations like that, you know, it's almost like you have to inform the officials, we're not going to look to foul right away. I, I just think it's easy. I'm not saying that, that was a bad call by any means. I'm just saying that there are times when it's clear and evident that you're going to foul and they anticipate the call and they give it even on the touch. But there are other times in a trap situation like that closest to your bench, you do not want to foul. You want to steal first. Jalen Carey has been quite the cheerleader today, out with surgery on a thumb ligament, starting point guard to begin the year, not expected to return this year. Still getting the job done down at the end of the Syracuse bench. Fluger steps back, that's three. Another one! A four-point game. Look for the trap. Don't don't anticipate the foul. You want trap first. Here it is. They got three defenders in the area. Time timeout out. taken by Elijah Hughes. The penultimate timeout for Syracuse. And, and that's that's exactly what you're looking for in that situation. You want to trap first, force a tough pass because the tough pass gets picked off. It leads to a layup. Last possession where the foul was called, it could have been a layup for Rex Fluger. Uh, Gibbs hit one last time, Fluger hit one this time. Neither were pretty, but they found the bottom of the net. Yeah, it doesn't really matter as long as it goes in. And sometimes desperation threes, you let it fly. I don't want to say with more confidence, but with less fear. And this is the trap. This is exactly what you're looking for. you got three that you really just want to have two, and you want to have that third defender. with an aggressiveness defensively, but you know you got to get a steal. Inbound, stolen away by Hub. 15 to play. Good win for three. No, 
It's Mooney from the left block to reverse lay-in. A two-point game. And Joe Girard, the nation's best free-throw shooter, will shoot at the other end. All right, so this is really where you earn it if you're Joe Girard. This is where you earn it. In that last possession, they had Gurrier wide open. They didn't want to throw it to him. They wanted to get the ball to Joe Girard, and by forcing it there, it ended up being a steal. This is exactly the guy you want. How about this? A freshman coming into this environment. He's shooting right into the student section. Straight cash, homie. That's not my line, by the way. No, it's Randy Moss. Making sure you know. Just so everybody knows. I mean, man, that's, Joe Girard being is more like Greg Jennings right here, putting the team on his back. Oh man, he is. Wow. And a crucial one to make it a four-point game. Good foul. Good foul. They had five fouls, one to give, and that's where you give it. You don't want to allow them to advance the ball that easily. You don't do it in the half court. You do it in a transition situation. Now you're able to get your defense set. Now you're not probably going to foul. You've got no reason to foul now. Maybe get one more in. Nope. Up with the driving kick. Goodwin with a hand in his face. Shot no good. And Gibbs with one second left makes it 84 82. Loose ball. And no call. Gibbs chasing after Gerard as the clock hits triple zeros. And Gerard doing the right thing and just going away. Both teams have not yet left the floor either. Everybody's all right. Everybody's all right. It's a, it was a hard fought game. In a clean game. And Syracuse comes away with the 84-82 victory. I give both teams credit. Look, this was a well-played basketball game. And, and let's take a look at what happened at the end. That's all it was. Joe Girard gave the basketball. That's kind of a no-no. When Gibbs actually followed Girard for a few steps. Well-played game. Enjoyable. They played twice this year, a total of three points.